hello there, I'm back. Um, a little upgraded now that I have an office, so that's cool, right? All right, so last time we talked about bond administration. And we discussed about how that was my first job out of college, la di la di da. We talked about how I was doing the investor capital activity. We had a cash desk. We had a fund administrator doing more of the really core admin work of sub documents and entering that into the CRM system, et cetera, et cetera. So that was the operation side. Of the business right and then I said today we would the next session get into financial reporting now I won't spend a ton of time on this because I myself never did financial reporting I myself was never an auditor so I'm going to spend a little time going over this, but I think it's important to know at the bank and financial services, we have the ops team. That's where a lot of us were at right out of college. And then we had financial reporting, which is more of your CPAs and accounts. Now, I know you're curious, what did those financial statements look like? Well, we had a statement of asset and liabilities that looked much the same as what probably you've heard in school called a balance sheet statement of investments right so let's just write this down we had statement of operations okay statement of capital change excuse me statement of change in partners capital and statement of cash flow all right so there'd be unaudited audited financial statements um, and I'm gonna stop there as far as the financial statements go strictly because it's not something I ever did so I'm not gonna speak to it but that gives you at least a basis for for what's going on so let's take a step back here in the last session I talked about how I was doing investor capital activity right we all remember the basic accounting function assets plus liabilities equals owners equity right so investor capital activity would have been hitting that right owners equity and that would reflect on to the financial statements so throughout the year when I'm just grinding no uh, when I was doing the capital call and distribution notices I think what I'm, point I'm trying to drive home here is fix that part of the accounting equation these are then the financial statements that follow we have unaudited we have audited something that was very specific to private equity that would come up that again I'm not going to speak to knowledge about but you should look it up if you're interested look up the YouTube video distribution waterfall whiteboard they do a great job of explaining a waterfall calculation okay so that was kind of the set up here and that's what was happening first two and a half years when I was in private equity fund administration I then moved to some tax roles in the bank of tax informational reporting which I'm not gonna get into right now I think what I'll jump into right now is the fact that from a tax perspective, which this I did for a while, that this would eventually then create from a tax perspective, K1s and 1065s. All right, K1s were at the investor level Vibes were at the fund level. So we would use these financial statements to come up with that. And both places I worked used the CC 
reach, access, get the job done with A1s and hit 65s. Um, truthfully, the biggest, and I mentioned this before in my last, when we're dealing with private equity, right, these alternative investments, I mentioned before, it's a lot of different partners. That comes into play when you hit 65s and we're having to do allocations to create then the K1s. Um, so let's stop there. Hopefully we're kind of seeing the flow. This is fund administration. This is what's happening here then from a tax perspective. I will dive in next section into a great great opportunity I hope those of you have to experience CCH access I'm kidding it uh, takes a while to get hang of I'll talk about that and then with that I'll explain from a tax informational system standpoint how do we come up with those 1099s and other tax informational reporting what is out there and basically why do we need that? Why do we need these K-1s? Well, folks need them when they go to do their individual return. All right, so I'd say for homework, again, if you're really interested in financial reporting, I never did it, so I did kind of like a half job of explaining it. Go to this YouTube video, Distribution Waterfall Whiteboard, um, poke around the CCH Access website, and next session we will get into more of okay i'm an individual i have this k1 now how did that come about um it came about probably through somebody using tax software like cch access which again i'm going to dive into because i wish i had a little bit more of background in that before i went into that and then tax informational reporting like when you work in financial services when you're producing 1099 why is that so difficult why what challenges do we go through from that perspective and that's currently what I'm doing now for a living is tax informational reporting so let me know if you have any questions and have a good day guys thanks